Hello to everyone. I welcome you to my video about double entry records for depreciation. This is Senior Huntington, your accounting tutor. Now, after watching this video, of course, you should be able to incorporate depreciation calculations into the accounting records. We are going to see how do you record depreciation in the accounting records. Remember, all assets with a limited useful life must be depreciated. Land has unlimited useful life. Therefore, land is not depreciated. When we talk about depreciation, depreciation according to IAS 16 property plant and equipment is the systematic key allocation of the depreciable amount of an asset over its useful life. That is depreciation. You systematically allocate the depreciable amount of an asset over its useful life. Don't forget that depreciation is an expense in the statement of profit or loss. In other words, when we talk about depreciation, we are referring to that part of the cost of an asset that is always consumed at the end of each year throughout the asset's useful life. So, we already know how to calculate depreciation from my previous video about depreciation of non-current assets. We know the methods of calculating depreciation. Now we are going to see, after calculating this depreciation, how do you record it in the books of accounts? So in this video, you're going to learn how to make the appropriate entries for depreciation in your accounting books. You will also learn how to make the appropriate period entries in the financial statements. Now, how do we record depreciation? The method we use uh, involves maintaining each fixed asset at its cost in the ledger account, but while operating another ledger account where depreciation to date is recorded. Meaning that if you have a non-current asset, you're going to prepare a non-current asset account. At the same time, you're going to open up another account and that account is known as the accumulated D provision for depreciation account. So always maintain two separate accounts. One for the non-current asset account and the other for accumulated provision for depreciation account. That accumulated provision for depreciation account records all your depreciation to date. So that's where we enter our depre. That's where we enter our depreciation. So the depreciation at the end of each period is posted directly to that cumulative provision for depreciation account or what you know as the provision for depreciation account. That account only records the depreciation to date at the end of each period. So at the end of each period, calculate your depreciation, post it directly to that provision for depreciation account. What is the double entry for recording depreciation in the accounting records? The double entry is very clear. Remember, depreciation is an expense. So all expenses have to be debited to the statement of profit and loss. So when recording depreciation, always debit the profit and loss account and credit the accumulated provision for the depreciation account. That's the double entry for recording depreciation. Debit, profit and loss account. Sometimes you can even debit what we call the depreciation expense. Then credit the accumulated provision for depreciation account. Remember, depreciation is not a cash expense. We don't pay for depreciation. It's all about allocating the cost of the asset to those later years for a cash payment that has already occurred previously. I'm going to use this illustration to show you how we record the depreciation in the accounting records. 
a business has a financial year end of 31st December. So meaning that every 31st December, this business has to close up. It has to balance off its books. So 31st December, that's the year end of this business. A computer is bought for shillings 2000 on 1st January 2005. It is to be depreciated at a rate of 20% using the reducing balance method. Remember, we have different methods of calculating depreciation. We have what we call the straight line method as well as the reducing balance method. To remind you, straight line method, it charges a constant annual depreciation charge in each of the years throughout the asset is used for life. So here the depreciation amount per annum is the same throughout the asset is used for life. Then the reducing balance method, the depreciation in the earlier years is always high compared to the later years. So the reducing balance method charges a higher depreciation amount in the earlier years of the use of life of the asset. So this computer is depreciated at a rate of 20% using the reducing balance method. Required records for the first three years. We are going to come up with our records for the first three years of this business. So as I told you, need to, you need two different accounts. One for the non-current asset account, which will be a computer account in this case. Then you also need another account, which is the accumulated de provision for depreciation or accumulated depreciation account. Now for the non-current asset account, of course, that will be your computer account. You have to debit that account with the cost of the computer. So as you can see, on 1st Jan, there will be a debit entry in this account of 2000. That is in 2000, that is in 2005. You have to show that on 1st Jan, you paid out cash of 2000 to acquire a computer. Don't forget the rules of double entry that whenever we make a debit entry, we are increasing an asset account. So when a business acquires a non-current asset, when a business acquires a non-current asset, then you have to go and debit the non-current asset account, as you can see in this case. We need another account. This account is to be used when recording DPRI, when recording our depreciation. That account is known as the accumulated provision for depreciation account. At the end of each of the years, over the three years period, we have to calculate depreciation and enter it in this account. So 31st December 2005, you'll calculate your depreciation. And remember, this, depreci uh, this depreciation has to be credited to the accumulated provision for depreciation. So 31st December 2005, you will make a credit entry in the accumulated provision for depreciation, that is for computer. And to get the depreciation in the first year, you will get 20% of 2,000. 20% of 2,000 gives you shillings 400. So we credit our, comp our accumulated provision for depreciation account by 400. The particular we use is profit and loss. That in profit and loss, there will be an expense of 400 in respect of depreciation. So you enter that. You balance off your account at the end of the year. That is 31st December 2005. On the debit, there will be a balance carried down, which will be brought down at the start of 2006, first Jan. In 2006, still you have to calculate depreciation. So there will be a charge to the profit and loss. And in this case, that charge is 320. When you're coming up with the 320, that is the depreciation expense for 2006. We are using the reducing balance method. So meaning that you calculate depreciation on what you call the carrying amount of the asset. So it is 2,000 minus a 400. You get something like 1,600. 1, then 1,600 times 20%, you'll get 320. So that is the profit and loss. The charge to P&L at the end of 31st December 2006. You balance up. You come up with a total Accumulate depreciation of 720, which is to be brought down 
at the start of our third year, which is 2007. So in 2007, you have a balance brought down for depreciation of 720. But remember, at the end of each year, we have to calculate depreciation. So in 2007, 31st December, you will calculate your depreciation by getting the cost, which is 2000, minus the accumulated depreciation to date of 720. The current amount you get, subject it to 20%, and you will get the depreciation expense for 2007 as shillings 256. When you add up, you'll be having a cumulative total for depreciation of 976. That is the balance carried down, which balance is going to be brought down at the end, at the start of the next financial year, and that is 2008. So you can see that we have been crediting this accumulated provision for depreciation account with our depreciation expenses at the end of each year for the three years. In the first year, depreciation is 400. In the second year, depreciation is 320. In the third year, depreciation is 256. So you see, the depreciation keeps on, the depreciation charge per year keeps on reducing under the reducing balance method. So that is our accumulated provision for depreciation. Now in your profit and loss account, this is an extract for the years ending 31st December 2005, 2006, and 2007. In the profit and loss account, you have to show the depreciation expense at the end of each of these years. So in the first year, there's a 400, a 320 in 2006, as well as a 256 in 2007. This is your depreciation expense, which will be deducted from your gross profit in addition to the other expenses to come up with your net, to come up with your net profit. In the statement of financial position, of course, you have to present uh, this non-current asset at its cost, less the accumulated depreciation. But before we look at that extract, uh, here we have a working for the calculation of the depreciations at the end of each year. As you can see, that in the first year, the cost is 2,000. The depreciation of 2,005 is 20% of 2,000, which is 400. So you'll have to come up with a current amount of 1,600, which will subject 20%, since we are using reducing balance method, to come up with a depreciation of 320. The current amount, as at the end of 2006, is 1,280 which will be subject to 20% in 2007 to come up with a depreciation for that year. And finally, you will come up with a carrying amount as a 31st December 2007 of shillings 1,024. This is the working for the calculation of depreciation which we have entered in our accumulated provision for depreciation account. Of course, in the balance sheet, or what you call the statement of financial position, we have an extract here. How would you present this computer in the statement of financial position at the end of each year? Now, in the statement of financial position, these assets are to be carried at their cost, less accumulated depreciation. So, as you can see, 2005, 2006, and 2007, you have computers at cost, which is 2000. So, the cost is the same throughout the asset is useful life, but there is need to, uh, there is need to less the accumulated depreciation which we have computed in our previous uh, slide. So you see you have 400, 7, uh, 720, then 976. This depreciation keeps on accumulating year after year. So finally, we have our carrying amounts, which is computers at cost, less accumulated depreciation. So in the first year, we have a carrying amount of 1,600, 2005, we have 1,280. Then 2007, we have 1,024. That's how we present the assets, the non-current assets in the statement of financial position. So that's it all when it comes to the double entry records for depreciation. When you calculate your depreciation, take it to the credit of the accumulated D provision for depreciation, and you have to debit this depreciation expense in the statement of profit and loss. You have to show that as an expense. 
Then in the statement of financial position, you have to present the asset, that's the non-current asset at its cost, then less the accumulated de depreciation. That's it all for this video. Of course, uh, Senior Huntington is here to help you. In case you have any question or any concern, please you can submit that in the comments and you'll get a response as soon as possible. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.